Welcome back to the Evan Miller Report here on the SHR Media Networks. I'm Jason Miller along with Corey Evan this evening. And we are pleased to be joined now by the president of the Pacific Justice Institute, Brad Dacus joins us now to talk about the latest on explosive sex education to be forced down our kids' throats here in the state of California. Good evening, Brad. Oh, it's great to be on the program. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, apparently today, yeah, over in, inside the legislature, we have two issues, one which we discussed yesterday, one that had to do with mandatory vaccinations, but the reason we have you here today is for another issue that was also debated today in the legislature. This has to do with sex education. Tell us what happened, and were you on the floor today inside the state legislature, and did it get hot and heavy? Yeah, uh, here's what happened. Uh, here's, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about, about a bill that would require written parental consent for any student uh, participate for any um, sex ed program being put on in any public school uh, where it's being put on by an outside entity or representative or organization like Planned Parenthood. And the reason this is being offered is simply because of what happened in Lafayette. Uh, there in, in Lafayette, California, uh, a high school brought in on Planned Parenthood. Uh, these two individuals had a horrific background, a a disgusting uh, instruction and and uh, an, an agenda, and there was total disrespect for even letting parents know about it. So we're uh, properly. So we're uh, that's where this came from, and that's why one of our attorneys uh, testified today. Uh, before the state legislator, legislature in uh, in Sacramento, and uh, we're hopeful that that uh, in the end that that they will uh, do the right thing and and uh, respect the rights of parents. Uh, now, how much harm will this do to our kids? Because the name of this bill, if I have it correctly, this is being introduced by Assemblyman James Gallagher. This bill by the name of AB five seventeen. Uh, what would this do uh, do to our kids who are in public school right now? Now, I've heard, r- heard rumors that 14-year-olds might be able to take their pants off. I've also heard, uh, heard other reports that there may now be an adult toy store and that and people can use their imagination on, to, on what that might be inside public schools now if this is allowed to pass. Yeah, well, what we're talking, what we're looking at actually is the status quo, and this is what's so shocking, is the status quo uh, has school districts already doing this. This is what happened in Lafayette, uh, where they had, uh, from Planned Parenthood, two representatives, one of them had a sex toy business, uh, another one a sexual pleasure business, and they go into the school without being identified first ahead of time with parents for them to know about it. And they uh, put on these horrific, horrific presentations that are, are all about um, things that I, I mean, some things I can't even say on the radio. It's just they, uh, it, it's very, 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 very age inappropriate and just inappropriate uh, period. Well, and so they put on these. Her- uh, tried to tell us, and, uh, tell us, and uh, I, you know, I've been doing radio a lot of years, try to tell us in the mo- uh, at most. Uh, and I excuse the term I'm going to use, Brad. I don't mean to be offensive. In the most politically correct way that you possibly could. With okay, all right. I, okay, let audience. me. Sure. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll word it like this, and the audience will probably connect the, the dots if, if needed. But the, the kids had to take a survey, and we're giving a survey. These are 14 year olds, and you know, ninth grade uh, boys and girls. We're giving a survey on uh, and whether or not they're ready to uh, engage in intimacy. Uh, and so they answer these questions, and if they answer the questions right, then that means they're ready to start in, you know, engaging in the acts with, with the opposite gender. And, of course, that's very, uh, you know, contrary to what most parents would want their 14-year-olds, boys and girls, concluding. And, uh, and so this kind of instruction... So, so much for uh, <laughs> preventing teen pregnancy, that's what... I'm trying to say right, that. right. It's just, it just, it's just a terrible program. And also, they went in to talk to about gender identification and all the different kinds of genders you you may be. Now, most of us think, well, male, female. Oh no, 
they have they have all these complicated new kinds of gender identities. We can be a boy on the outside, girl on the inside. You can be a, a boy, girl, both, or neither. Uh, you can be, you know, tri uh, gender. You can be. It's it's just very bizarre, and all the stuff they gave these kids, of course, only adds to the room uh, for for further confusion and doubts and uh, and and uh, and insecurities. That is so dangerous and so uh, destructive, and so uh, we're, um, you know, we we just called it what it was and and identified it for what it was, uh, and uh, and it was and, and yet the, here's the sad thing is the, is the school, the school district and, the, and this high school, uh, Akalanis High School, uh, did, did not recant, did not um, apologize. No, they doubled down and they went and brought in. And they called it the, uh, I guess, Queer Straight Alliance uh, group to, um, I think it's what it's called, QSA, I believe it's what it's called. Um, and uh, they went on into the public schools, into the English classrooms with the, author, with the authority of the principal, and they put on these presentations and then asked the kids to, uh, to find out what kids were in favor of tolerance, or John talking about acceptance of homosexual sexual activities and which ones thought it was morally wrong, and and uh, if they, you know, uh, decided incorrectly, of course they'd be, uh, you know, uh, um, isolated from their peers and intimidated, and that's what's happened. I mean, that's that's not neat for the United States of America. We don't want our schools to become a place for, for state-sanctioned intimidation of kids who happen to have Christian beliefs or, and or, or Judeo-Christian perspectives, and uh, that's what this uh, what happened. That's what precipitated this. This legislation, which is there actually to, um, uh, that's being offered that we testify is actually there to correct uh, school and prevent school districts from doing what happened in Lafayette that so many liberal public school administrators uh, seem to, to think is fine and, and uh, acceptable. And of course, to the parents of California, it's not. Now we're speaking Our founding ladies. fathers are not only turning over in their graves, they're wishing that the whole turning themselves into fossil fuels process would speed up. Well, yeah, <laughs> to put it that's, kindly, that's one, that's one that's one way to put it. We're speaking, ladies and gentlemen, to Brad Dacus. He's the president of Pacific Justice Institute tonight. We're speaking to him about the explosive sex education bill, the AB five seventeen, that Assemblyman James Gallagher is trying to push into California schools. Now, if uh, when is this bill expected to be to be voted on, Brad? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm, and I don't have the, the details on that. I just know that it's, it's something that people need to be, uh, it's in, a very, in the very, very near future, if they can contact their state assemblymen, state senators, uh, and let them know their, uh, their support for legislation that would require written parental consent, not just notice, but written parental consent before children can be given a sex ed instruction from some outside group outside the school staff and administration. And that's what's so important because it's these way, way out, very damaging, um, destructive uh, organizations with their own profit margin agendas like Planned Parenthood that, uh, that so many parents would not trust from day one, and yet they come in and they, and they pull off these kind of uh, shenanigans, if you will, and, and, and horrific presentations that are so destructive, so irresponsible, and, uh, you know, in fact, you know, one of the two instructors, I'm going to make it clear, uh, we caught their, their tweet, we inter- their tweetering, tweeting how they and, the other rep- and other representatives from Planned Parenthood were going to a porn conference, or a porn convention, pornography convention, you know, and not to kind of stop it, but to be quite the opposite. That's what they're made of. That's their agenda, and that's what we want to stop and by parents being able to have to give written parental consent whenever their child is uh, given a sex ed program by some outside group like this. So, uh, so essentially, Brad, and I want to make sure to be clear on this, we're not tr- you're not trying to censor the likes of Planned Parenthood and take them out of the school. All you're trying to say is, hey, we want, uh, we want a, a balanced thing of both sides, that if there are certain parents who want their kids taught about this, great, they can learn about it, that's fine. But if there's certain parents who don't want their kids taught about this uh, due to religious beliefs or just don't want to be taught about it at all, the, they should have that option. 
Right. Exactly. And that's why written parental consent is so basic and and uh, it's something that sh- we shouldn't even have to d- debate about. And yet the sad thing is, is that, you know, we know that the Republicans will support the legislation to require parental consent. Uh, the Democrats, who have a huge, uh, definite, ma- strong majority in both the Assembly and the State Senate, we're not sure there's enough Democrats, sadly enough, that can be pulled away um, from their, their core uh, radical agenda to support something that's parent-friendly and uh, respectful of the rights and wishes of parents in California. We're hopeful that there will be, uh, but we, we just don't know at this point. And it would be a sad day that, you know, that, uh, that something like this, so basic like this, would, would not be passed uh, because of the strength of, the, uh, of some radical uh, social law uh, groups like the LGBT and, and others. Absolutely. Well, keep us up to date on that now. Do you have a little bit more time for, with us, uh, Brad? Because I have one more story I want to cover with you before we let you go today. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Okay. I want to talk about this Sodomite Suppression Act. This has made headlines across the nation for the past two weeks. This is be, being propo- uh, being proposed by a Huntington Beach attorney. It's called the Sodomite uh, Suppression Act. And what? And of course, here in California, this bill has no zero chance of ever becoming law. But it is giving us conservatives, Brad, a very bad name. Uh, why don't you talk to our audience who is outside of California a little bit more about it and explain what this bill is? Uh, bill is first of all, and then explain how it makes us look bad as conservatives, if you would. Uh, yeah, what it does, the, the gentleman who, who uh, authored this, I don't know, I've never met him. Uh, I don't know what's going on in his, his thinking, but uh, it's a sad, sad piece of, uh, of a proposed initiative. I think on the ballot, basically what it says is that if someone is, is caught committing homosexual acts, then they can be shot in the head and executed uh, for doing so. I mean, it's just, it's so, so way out. It's so contrary to... Uh, the uh, our Christian worldview, which is, you know, the fact Christ didn't come to kill, but to, to but to save, and um, and this, so this is just very very draconian. Uh, it's it's something way 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 out. I don't think he's going to get a hundred signatures in California, much less the three hundred thousand that would be needed to put this on the ballot. I really don't. Uh, it's a very, um, you know, it's a, it's just a very bad piece of legislation. And the sad thing is, is uh, the extreme groups. That are so zealously promoting these these uh, these lifestyles, homosexuality, transgenderism, and, and things like that, uh, are going to be using this in a way as a, as a to uh, stereotype uh, people who are uh, have moral and, and, and religious convictions and uh, and policy convictions against um, against that lifestyle of homosexuality. And you know what? Uh, uh, and I, 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 when I was young, I had the very, uh, very strict opinion. I was brought up in a Christian household, Brad. I was under the very strict opinion, and this is, of course, came from my parents, that homosexuals were bad. You don't want to hang out with the likes of them. I, I developed, of course, in my opinion, matured in my opinion per se. And it's like, okay, I respect uh, respect homosexuals for their rights to do what they want to do, just as long as they don't infringe the infringe that fringe. The, uh, their rights on uh, force their rights onto us uh, and their lifestyle onto us, and w- in which it affects my family. I have no problem with that. And unfortunately, we have people like this Huntington Beach attorney who wants to act like the people over in Russia do, because the people in Russia feel the exact same way that he does. At least the government does. If you even spout that you're a homosexual or pass homosexual material out in Russia, guess what? You're either shot on the spot or you're put inside a jail cell, and I and I don't think we should be uh, doing things like that here in the United States. Well, you're right. You're absolutely right. And uh, yeah, we in, this, in the United States are are um, we're very civilized. Uh, we may not agree with each other, but we hopefully uh, would uh, allow each other to express our opinions, our viewpoints, our attitudes uh, without being. Uh, completely, uh, you know, uh, sti- uh, silencing one, one group or the other. Um, and this kind of legislation, in this proposed uh, initiative, is, is just horrific. Something I don't think uh, most Americans would uh, would vote for or support. That's for sure. 
<laughs> okay, Brad, uh, and before we let you go, is there yeah. anything else you'd like to bring up to folks here that nationally that's going on here in the state of California that they need to know about uh, what your organization is doing? Because you're not only covering uh, the issue right now of the education in the Capitol. There's this transgender bathroom bill that is going on. There's so much going on here in the state of California that people don't even know about. Right. Well, I can say one thing I encourage um, is for people to um, to go to our website and uh, if they have their children in public schools and they want information about their rights and lay claim to their rights, we have opt-out forms that really empower parents to be able to lay claim to the rights that they have to protect their children and all kinds of things from sex education to common court testing and privation of privacy. And they can get all that information from our website, which is pacificjustice.org. PacificJustice.org, PacificJustice.org, and they also can sign up to get our, our weekly Legal Insider uh, email. It's short, very interesting, and um, and thousands receive that. I encourage people to take advantage of that as well. It's, it's uh, at our website, PacificJustice.org, PacificJustice.org. All right, Brad, and I don't know. I haven't got the official schedule for the Eagle Forum Conference. Have you been invited back this year? Uh, that is my understanding, and I'm looking forward to uh, participating. Well, we. Look It'll be good forward. to see you again, sir. Yes, absolutely. We. Look, uh, I. Uh, I uh, enjoyed uh, your spe- you speaking last year, and of course, we interviewed you last year. And hopefully, you could stop by our broadcast booth this time around. We'd love to interview you again. Uh, what to- topics are you going to be talking about uh, when you come to the conference this year? If you can give a little teaser without giving too much away. <laughs> We're going to be talking about the the uh, an update of the challenges to parents' rights that we have not seen until just very recently that are so shocking and so serious, and then also uh, empowerment uh, things specific things that parents can do to empower themselves, protect themselves, uh, and their their children, their families, and uh, so it's not just a uh, you know this is how terrible everything is. It's also very constructive and empowering parents to, to take a, a clear actions uh, and uh, to protect their families. Well, it should be very informative indeed. And uh, coming on May the 2nd, if you live in the California area, come down to Costa Mesa to the Calvary Chapel. More details in the next week or so from Orlin Curla, the, our SHR media contributor and global affairs correspondent as well. She will have more details on it. But the SHR Media is your home of the Eagle California Eagle Forum Conference on May the 2nd. Starts at Our coverage starts at 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much, Brad, for joining us, and come back on again soon if you have an update on that bill that has to do with sex ed. Great. Thank you. My pleasure. God bless. Thanks. Bye-bye. God, God bless Bye-bye. you, too. Bye-bye.